And welcome, everyone, to a Pac-12 chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by UCLA's Mick Cronin. And, Mick, first off, um, since mid-March, we've all been in a very similar situation, not just in this country, but around the globe. How are you handling uh, staying at home? Well, you know, at, at this point, I think most people are adjusted. Um, so, I don't, you know, I'm fortunate. Uh, I think about less fortunate, you know, people that have no jobs and uh, you had, two, you had two groups of people, people struggling financially, people struggling uh, medically. So to this point, you know, my family's been uh, safe and sound. So uh, it's, a, it's a huge adjustment. Somebody texted me this morning, like, hey, if it opened back up, what would you want to do? I, it's an easy answer. I think for most, we just want to go to work. You know, vac- like you, usually, hey, hey, I want to go on vacation here, there, whatever. You know, I think we all just want to go back to normal. I want, like, you know, get back for us see my staff in person, see my players be in the gym to where we're all in the, with hearing the balls bounce. And that's our normal. So, you know, I uh, think everybody just wants their life back right now. All right. So I've talked to a lot of coaches and players over the last couple of weeks and everyone sort of has a different situation in terms of their ability to work out. Some players are fortunate that they actually may have a hoop in front of their house. Some live, you know, in other situations, maybe an apartment, uh, or maybe they're still on campus and they don't have that access. Uh, you know, everyone can get out and run in some form, but how are your players handling this setup in terms of trying to stay in shape and try to stay connected at, at this juncture? Well, you know, I, I, I read what Sean Payton said the other day, um, and I, I thought that was, you know, he's seen the big picture. Um, you know, guys, you got to stay in the best shape you can. Our difference is how you got to worry about academics. We're on the quarter system. We got to finish strong. Uh, this is going to end, and you know when it does, you want to make sure that when we get back in the gym, you're in the best shape you can be in. But uh, you know, my focus right now is on my players, their families, their academics. They're, when I say my players and their families, their health and their academics. Uh, if you, whatever they can do to get in the gym is great. Some of them have more access than others. Um, you know, as far as working out, staying in shape, uh, it, it goes back to what I call the club or lang days, right? Sit ups, push ups, pull ups. Uh, there's ways to do it. Uh, you ran an iron man, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but, uh, Hey, at the end of the day, I, I still think, you know, safety of your family, uh, you, you know, my guys and their families, and then obviously our academics, that that's what I stress to them. Well, for the record, it was an Olympic triathlon. Not okay. an Iron Man, but I don't want to give myself too much. So time. impressive. Yes, thank you. All right. So this past season, um, a lot of times when you take over a program, it's going to take not just months, it may take years to get your imprint on. But your season really changed within months. And by the end of the season, despite what happened in that last second shot against USC, you guys were playing your best basketball. They were defending. Everyone was all in. How did it happen this past season? It just took us time. You know, I think part of the reason I took the job is because I knew we had a roster of players. And I knew we had incoming recruits in Jaime and Jake that were going to come, no matter who the coach was. Uh, that was part of the allure of the job. Uh, it, because in what I went through at Cincinnati in 06, I would not wish on my worst enemy, you know, of having to start totally over. Um, there's no players out there at this time of the year. So, um, that was an allure of it. I, but the, the issue, we were young. We were really inexperienced. We had no leadership returning. So we were going to have to build. It was just going to take time. And that's coach talk. And people tend to brush us off with coach talk. And that's just, you know. But, you know, there's kind of, we didn't want to scratch off to get our job. You know, so you, sometimes you got to give us credit and listen. It was just going to take us some time. Uh, our guys needed experience. It's not that they decided to start listening in January. They were great all along. They just needed experience. I mean, Tiger Campbell was, he was on uh, knee rehab machines when I got the job. You know, now all of a sudden I need him to play 35 minutes a game. And it, he ends up leading the Pac-12 and assist the turnover ratio. So it's a tremendous accomplishment on his part. I mean, just an amazing accomplishment. Uh, so uh, the players, as they got experience, they developed their ability to compete harder and longer. We were able to start winning games. But practice didn't change. Like There was no you know, big, great meeting we had that everybody just decided, okay, you know, we're going to try harder. Um, you know, people who have been around my programs know, you know, our guys, they practice hard all the time. It's really not an option. <laughs> So uh, I was just really proud of them. I was happy for them. 
Because this day and age, there's a lot of pressure on kids. A lot of, you know, social media is 24 hours. And as an adult, you can block it out. It's hard to block it out as a kid. So I was just really happy for them. It was fun to be around. It was fun to watch and, uh, it, and to watch them smiling and laughing the last six weeks of the year as the winds were piling up. You know, I was just thinking about this. Your own medical situation years ago um, where you had to take a forced break um, yeah. because of what was going on with your veins and all that in, in, in your skull. Yeah. Um, how, how much did that change your perspective and ma basically make sure that you had more patience in something like yeah. this? Um, having a daughter, <laughs> you know, kids will help you. They help you, you know. Uh I'm not the most religious guy in the world, but I had a guy tell me one time, you know, God does, he, well, he's, he's, got a, he's got a sense of humor. So he gives a divorced single dad a daughter that's, you know, an Irish and intense guy. And here you got to calm down and play shoots and ladders her whole life. Now she's a teenager, you know, I'm lucky she speaks to me. But, uh, you know, I think any experience you have in life helps you. You know, we would all tell you, and so I'll be going into my 18th year, uh, you gain wisdom, you know, over time. And you learn what to you, you learn to pick your battles, and it's not about winning the battle; it's about winning the war. So you learn what battles to fight, and sometimes there's battles that you lose on purpose uh, because you know it's going to help you win the war. So I think it's just uh, the experience of a lot of things, whether it was just you know what I went through, whatever year that was, and I had to sit out a few months, uh, or just years of coaching experience that that helps you to where you realize every. Every call by an official is not a conspiracy against you. <laughs> All right, here, last thing here. Um, next season, let's assume it is on schedule uh, with roster turnover. We, you know, everything's changing right now. We don't know for sure, but what you know now, uh, what could next season's UCLA team look like? Uh, I mean, I think no matter what happens, uh, we're, we're going to have, with the NBA draft stuff, we're going to have a good team. Because we got enough returning pieces. Now, you know, if the roster is totally intact, obviously we got a chance to have a great team. Um, but, uh, you know, that being said, uh, I'm a day to day guy. I've always said that, you know, it's my John Rambo line, you know, when Colonel Troutman asked him how will you live, John, and he said day by day. So, you know, this, especially now, Right. And we're all living day by day. But in the, the college basketball, as you when you and I became friends, uh, this changed a lot since our first interview. And I think it's a thing of the past um, with the transfer rule coming in with the G League stuff, with the NBA alluring kids. They they've convinced kids it's a good thing to be a, to be able to use them for cheap in the G League. Um, and if it doesn't work, so what? They just go to the next guy. Um, some, you know, there was a time nobody would have thought that was a good deal. There was a time Kenyon Martin laughed, laughed when somebody said, you know, you could go like 20th in the draft. He laughed at that. He said, why would I do that? I'm going to come back and be the first pick. Like, the, you know, that was 2000 or 99 would have been that spring. He literally laughed at that. That's how that's 20 years ago. The world has changed. Roster turnover now is the, it's just going to be the wave of the future. It just is. So, uh, we'll have these interviews every month <laughs> and sit there and say, you know, who who's going to be on whose team? I mean, you just don't know. So, uh, you know, I, I, it probably leads us into the transfer thing I know you want to talk me about. Well, no, no. I mean, we don't know where it's going, so we'll let that lie. Yeah, we will. But, but the bottom line is you should have a team that's going to be right near the top uh, of the Pac-12 next season, uh, regardless what happens with the draft process. We don't even know when that's going to happen. So, most importantly, best to you. Stay safe. And hopefully we'll talk to you soon about what we know for certain is the beginning of the season. <laughs> Sounds good, buddy. It's good to talk to you.